Count your blessings. I love that hymn, and that kind of leads us into this morning's uh, scripture reading, which is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. It is chapter 8. And these are the words that Moses spoke to the Israelites. When I was reviewing this chapter earlier this week, I think the heading above it said, Don't Forget God. So as you follow along this morning, chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, Moses to the Israelites. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to eat, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as, as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God will discipline you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines, and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget your Lord, your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, and when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase with all you have is multiplied, and then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. He, he led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Please bow with me in prayer. Almighty God, we bow before you this morning and we thank you, Lord, for the gift of your son, Jesus, for the opportunity to know you and to have a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for your holy word that calls us to remember, to remember all that you have done for us and to not forget, but to be mindful of the way in which you lead us each day to walk closely with you, to, as we heard sung today, to allow you to lead us. And so, Father, we pray that you would um, be with us and that you would guide our thoughts and our hearts as we look at your word this day. We pray these things in the wonderful name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. 
We are indeed going to look at uh, memory and considering uh, how we are called to remember all that God's done for us. And in light of that, I want to share a couple of uh, a little stories about memory. It seems that there was an older couple who realized that they were having some memory issues. And so they went to a memory power class, and they had shared that with a few of their neighbors that they were going to that. And, and afterwards, uh, a couple days later, uh, the husband was out puttering around in the yard, and one of the neighbors came by and said, hey, how, how was that memory class? And he said, it was really good. And he said, well, what was the name of the instructor? And he learned in the memory class that when you can't remember immediately, you do things by association. And he said, well, you know that flower that smells really good but has thorns? And his neighbor said, Rose? And he said, that's right. And then he turned to the house and he said, Rose, what was the name of that instructor? <laughs> but just so we know that memory is not, thank you, that memory is not just an issue that affects the elderly. It seems that there was a, uh, a preacher's conference for, for new pastors, and so uh, an, uh, there were a good number of pastors there, and this young pastor, they had a lot of different speakers, and one of the pastors that was a part of the speaking uh, shared how, how it's good to start out with a little humor to get people's attention, and he said to uh, all of them before he started his sermon, he said, now, um, the best years of my life were spent in the arms of a woman that wasn't my wife. And there was just kind of some shock in the room, and then he smiled and he said, she was my mother. And they all laughed and proceeded, he proceeded to go on and give his message. Well, the young pastor thought, well, I'm going to try that Sunday. And uh, he, uh, as he walked up to the pulpit, he was getting a little cloudy on the details of how to say this. But he, you know, he turned around and he said, you know, the best years of my life were spent in the arms of another woman other than my wife. And there were just gasps and shocks, and, and as he looked at people's faces, and he just got more and more nervous of trying to think of what the punchline was, and, and finally he just said, and I can't remember who she is. <laughs> Memory can be a problem. It can be a serious problem uh, for all of us. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, I uh, went to uh, Sarah Bush uh, Lincoln Hospital here, and uh, they had a pastor's breakfast, and of all things, uh, Dr. Fatima was there. She's uh, a, a neurologist, and she was talking about memory and dementia and how it relates to pastoral care for the families and the caregivers, and she was kind of outlining those stages of memory loss. And she said the, the first stage is when you kind of forget things, but you still are aware enough that you kind of cover things up so that other people are not aware that you're getting a little forgetful. And then that second stage is when you're forgetting things and it's not so serious. There are other people that are aware you're forgetting things, but it's not so serious that they need to intervene. And then the third stage is actually it's getting so serious that they have to remind you of things uh, for you to, to go on. And I thought, I think I'm in stage one, unless you tell me otherwise. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, uh, we're going to talk about memory. One of the things that I learned actually in that breakfast was Besides just taking care of your physical health, there's not a lot we can do to prevent uh, memory loss. But on a spiritual realm, there is. 
And that's why Moses addressed uh, the, the people of God. Basically, the whole book of Deuteronomy is Moses' last talks and speeches before they go on into the promised land. And he knows he's not going to be able to be there with them anymore. He's not going to be able to enter that land. And he's really trying to prepare them so that they will be faithful to God and not lose the blessings that God uh, wants to give them. On this Memorial Day weekend, uh, when we remember the sacrifices that have been made so that we can live in this free nation, uh, I think it's appropriate for us, for us also to remember that we have a God who has blessed us. And, and I, I specifically chose this passage of Scripture for this weekend, though God uniquely has a, a covenant relationship with the nation of Israel. I can't help but to when I read through Deuteronomy chapter 8 and see all of the ways in which God blesses the people and he tells them not to forget his blessings, I think we are a nation who has been blessed greatly by God. And I fear we as a nation have in many ways forgotten the God who has blessed us. And though you and I may not be able to change that whole scape of a uh, viewpoint for the nation, we can change it for ourselves and through our influence change it amongst the people that we share life with. And so we are called to remember. And um, throughout this chapter, Moses continually says, don't forget don't forget. And he gives indications through the chapter of what happens when we forget. For, for forgetting the Lord leads to certain things that are detrimental to us and to our well-being and our relationship with God. And the first thing in forgetting the Lord, it leads to ungratefulness. Uh, throughout, uh, we can move on to the next screen. Uh, throughout the, uh, <clears throat> this chapter, he describes the different things that they're supposed to remember. They're supposed to remember that for 40 years, God fed them. He miraculously fed them. He fed them with manna that came from heaven. And each day they ate from that, that food that God had provided that, as he said, their forefathers knew nothing about. He brought water straight out of solid rock for them uh, so that they, they had something to drink. He provided for their every need. Their clothes did not wear out. And walking 40 years in the wilderness, he says, and your feet didn't swell. I hope that's not an indication that there's something going on in my mind here, but... <clears throat> We will either work it out or I'll be tied to the pulpit. I'm not sure which. Shall we switch to the pulpit? To the pulpit? Okay. You all know how much I love to stand right behind the pulpit and, <laughs> and not move. So pray for me. <clears throat> but Moses uh, reminds them throughout this chapter how vitally important it is for us, as we have sung, to count our blessings, to declare to our God that we indeed are grateful. A real hallmark of being a believer, I believe, is to be a grateful people, to be thankful for what God has provided for us to express our thanks and our praise to the living God on a regular basis. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, one of the tools that I use in my own personal life and worship with God is the Psalms. I'm probably in the Psalms every day. The, though I, I, I'm working my way through reading the, the entire Bible again this year, uh, even when I get out of Psalms in my readings, I jump back into Psalms for the purpose of prayer. And when you read through Psalms over and over again, you will find this theme. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving kindness endures forever. Over and over again in different psalms, David and others cry out to God, and they give thanks to God for God's goodness, for God's provision. We are called to be grateful people, and when we forget God, we become ungrateful. We become the opposite of what we should be. Mother Teresa uh, told this story in the National Prayer Breakfast in 1994. She said, one evening we went out and we picked up four people from the street. One of them was, a most, was in most terrible condition. And I told the sisters, you take care of the other three. I'll take care of the one who looks the worst. And so I did for her all that my love could do. I put her in bed, and there was such a beautiful smile on her face. She took hold of my hand, and she said only two words, thank you, and then she died. I could not help but examine my own conscience before her. What would I have done if I were in her place? My answer was very simple. I would have tried to draw a little attention to myself. I would have said, I'm hungry, I'm dying, I'm in pain, or something like that. But instead, she gave much more. She gave me her grateful love, and she died with a smile on her face. I think Mother Teresa says something very profound here in that uh, gratitude is always oriented toward the one who is giving rather than on ourselves. And we're called to remember God because we have so many things to be thankful for. Is that not true? Amen. Second thing that happens to us when we forget the Lord is we become self-reliant. Or in, in other words, we become proud. Um, we, uh, we, we, oh shoot, I can't move, can I? <laughs> All right. Um, we, we all want for our children to be able to get to the point where they're self-reliant and self-sufficient and can take care of themselves and, and do for themselves. And, and that, is, that is the natural goal in this life. But spiritually speaking, we are always called to rely and depend upon the living God. It, it, and in fact, I think the more that we grow in our relationship with God, the more we realize we need to depend upon him for everything. Um, it, it, it's, it, it creates within us a humility that is appropriate. Imagine with me, uh, just like children who uh, say when they get to be about two, they start saying, I do it. I do it. You know that? Remember that? That's when all the messes happen. You know, when I do it, and oh man, you, you got to kind of endure that, but they do it for themselves, and then you clean up afterwards. Uh, think with me. How do you and I as created beings who are sustained by the living God, who he, the very next heartbeat is a gift from him. He's sustaining you and me. How do we say to him, I do it. I can handle it. I've, I, 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 I'm in control of life. That's, that's what Moses says. He's, he says, when you get in the land, if you forget the Lord, this is what you're going to end up saying. Look at me. I've made this wealth. I've made this big house. I've, 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 I've. And you haven't done a thing. Because he says, the Lord has given you the ability to do these things. It's still a gift from the hand of God. 
and we are to remember, remember that everything that is good comes from him and not become self-reliant, not say, I've done it, and pat yourself on the back, but say, thank you, God, that you have allowed me to partner with you to make this happen. We are called to humble ourselves. There's a great um, illustration of a, a, a sign of humility. In 1994, uh, Thurman Thomas, uh, his head was bowed with his hands covering his face. He sat on the Buffalo Bills bench following his team's fourth straight Super Bowl loss. And his three fumbles had helped to seal that fateful uh, occasion. Suddenly, standing before him uh, was the Dallas Cowboys star running back, Emmett Smith. He had just been named the MVP of the Super Bowl 28 and was carrying his small goddaughter. And Smith looked down at her and he said, I want you to meet the greatest running back in the NFL, Mr. Thurman Thomas. Now, Emmett Smith at that point had all the reason to be full of pride. He had all the reason to basically look down at any other running backs. And yet, as a sign of humility and uh, real character, I believe, he showed a uh, he showed that he recognized something in his opponent and uh, a fellow <clears throat> athlete. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, In humility, consider others better than yourselves. And we're called to uh, be people of humility and understand um, that all these things that we're given are by God. The third thing that can happen to you and me you know, when we uh, forget the Lord is we can fall into idolatry. That is, making anything, anything or anyone, putting them in the place of God in our life. God should be first, right? I'm going to try that again. There was some hesitation and there was some non-response and uh, we should be all together on this one. God should be first. Amen. Very good, very good. Uh, he, uh, he deserves to be first in our life, but you know, when we forget God, when he becomes a distant memory, when we forget all the ways in which God has been faithful in our lives, when we do not rehearse those things, and believe me, we have to continually to remind ourselves of these truths. When we forget God, then we, we are made to be worshipers. God has created us in that way. And guess what? If God is not on the throne in your heart, something else or someone else will take his place for you will still worship. I find it, I do not find it ironic at all. I find it very telling that we have, we have shows like American Idol. You know, there, that we, we, we call uh, people stars. We, we put people and things in the place of the living God. And we are called to be true worshipers of God, to adore him, to love him, to, um, to come before always give him thanks. In his book, Good Morning, uh, Mary Sunshine, the Chicago Tribune uh, columnist Bob Green chronicles the first two years of his daughter's life. And he, uh, he tells how when she got to the point that she could crawl, 
and, and get around on her own, he found this fascinating. He had a habit of doing work sometimes at home. He would get on his computer and he'd be laying in his bed. And before he knew it, he would look up from his laptop and he would uh, see his daughter at the foot of the bed. She had crawled to the bed, pulled herself up, and she was just staring at him. And he'd say, he, he would look back at her and they, they, they would make eye contact and they'd smile at one another for a moment and then she'd drop down to the floor and crawl off and do something else. And he said, before she got to that point in her life, she just cried and you had to come to her whenever she needed you. But he said, now that she got to this point, she came to him simply to gaze on him. Not to ask anything of him, but to simply gaze upon him. That's a pretty good picture of worship. At the heart of worship, there should be something that draws in us. We just want to gaze on the beauty of God, who has gifted us and has blessed us in so many ways. We come before him, and we don't necessarily ask anything, but we say, I love you back. I love you for all the ways you have loved me, and I am grateful. My brothers and sisters, on this Memorial Day weekend, in which we remember great sacrifice that has been made for us, let us remember that there has been a great sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary for each of us as individuals. And let us remember that that should lead us to thankfulness and humility before our God and devotion to love him and worship him and give him praise. Would you pray with me? Oh, gracious God, we bow before you this day and we confess, Lord, that we are forgetful people. That we are prone to spiritual dementia. That we have a tendency within us, and it's a part of our fallen nature, to forget all the ways in which you have been faithful and good and merciful and kind to us. We tend to live in the immediate. And we tend to be sometimes like infants who are demanding and cry out and only see what we lack rather than see all that we have been blessed with. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help all of us to spiritually grow up, to grow up in our sense of giving thanks to you, to understand that we are dependent upon you wholly and completely for all that we are, all that we have, and all that we'll ever become. And to be completely devoted to you in worship, to never allow anyone or anything to take the rightful place in our heart that you deserve, but that you would be first and foremost. And Lord, we thank you for the perfect example of your son Jesus, who even in that desert, when he was tempted by the devil, and he had every right to be recognized for who he was as the Son of God, he would not bow down. But he declared the very words that you gave Moses, that it's not by bread that we live, but by every word of the living God. And so help us, Lord, to follow after the one who set the perfect example and paid the price for our sin. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is uh, actually my favorite hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Um, it is a great hymn of worship that declares that we should thank the Lord because he is faithful. And as we stand and sing this hymn, I invite you, I extend this invitation that if there's anyone here this morning who you feel that prompting, you feel that tug in your heart that you need to give your life 
to God. Stephen gave us a perfect example here this morning. If you, if you know you need to step out and do that, I invite you to come. It would be an honor to pray with you. Maybe there are others here this morning who uh, God is saying, you need to be a part of this church family. Come. Maybe there's somebody that uh, uh, needs to rededicate their life. Or perhaps you just need prayer from your family. You feel free to come as we stand and sing together. Great is thy faithfulness.